All right, the recorder is started. Um, we are continuing to talk about uh, the SR latch today. So last week before the exam, we were talking about the uh, SR latch. No, after the exam, we started to talk about the SR latch, <clears throat> but we didn't quite finish you know, the analysis of the SR latch. So what we'll talk about, what, what we'll talk about today is a method to analyze you know, circuits like the SR latch, which is kind of funny to analyze because there's a little bit of a feedback um, because the output of one gate goes back to the input of the other one and vice versa. So let's, let me bring up the, uh, the circuit first you know, because I think seeing the circuit is going to be helpful. So give me a second here to start up Logisim. There we go. And I worked on this last week already, so I saved a copy of that into here. Okay, so do we still remember the circuit? Okay, hopefully you, know, you guys have read about <clears throat> that module over the weekend because you know, that is important, okay? Reading the material ahead of time is very important. Um, if, for people who do not have a habit of doing that, I will try my best to help those people to build a habit of you know, studying or reading before class because um, all of the classes here at a two-year university, we are only allowed to teach lower division classes. In other words, all we can teach here at ARC and all the other sister colleges in Los Rios are baby classes. Um, the real test <laughs> is after you transfer. Okay, so I want everybody to you know, kind of have some good study habit before you transfer because you know, that will make it easier you know, so that you don't run into you know, unexpected issues after you transfer. Okay, so we talked about the circuit, which is the actual uh, circuit of the text description that is here. Okay, this is just a text description of the same circuit. Um, the most dif difficult part to understand is the concept of a node, okay? So basically a node is a concept where your know, multiple ports of devices are quote unquote electrically connected. That's the whole concept of a node. All right, <clears throat> so graphically, if I go back to Logisim, if you use the poking tool and poke a particular wire, this is a node, okay? This, is, this particular node connects three things together. It connects the output pin Q to the output pin of N1, but it also connects to you know, the first input pin of N2. This is a single node in this case. So if you look at this one, it would be corresponding to the node that connects to the Q pin. So this line here is corresponding to the node that I just highlighted in Logisim. Do we have any questions about the equivalency in terms of you know, the the graphical representation of the circuit, this particular node that is highlighted right here, versus the text description of you know, how the ports of the various components are connected. Do we have any questions about that? No questions? Okay. <clears throat> so when, when, I, when I hear silence like that, okay, I hope you know, the answer is there's actually no question, as opposed to I don't even know what to ask because you know, that may not be a good thing to happen in a class. All right, so assuming that there's actually no question, we're gonna move ahead to analyze the circuit. So the way we analyze this circuit is I would turn off simulation and reset simulation. So this way we are not gonna be confused by you know, the output of the simulation itself. And instead, we'll try to do this manually. We try to, we'll try to analyze what's happening with this circuit manually. And we are going to you know, make one of the inputs a one and make the other one a zero, such as this, okay? And we wanna find out what's gonna happen um, when this you know, particular input goes in. And we'll assume that we know nothing about the output pins of N1 and N2. This is all we know about the circuit. This is the initial condition, okay? When you first you turn on the computer, Okay, inside your computer, this is what we're presenting to the N1 and N2 NAND gates. All right, 
So to analyze circuits like this, okay, I am, let me see if I can uh, do both at the same time or how to best display. Okay, I know exactly how to do this. Okay, this is going to be, it will take a little bit of tooling on my part, okay? So I'm going to use the, uh, okay, that's not, not what I want. There we go. Do it one more time. So I'm using a snipping tool <clears throat> to snip out you know, something I want to show and I will open it with a particular program to show the uh, bitmap that I, that I have just captured. And I will make this always on top, which means you know, this can not go under another window anymore. So at this point, I don't need Logisim anymore you know, because I'm not using Logisim to simulate the circuit. I'm just using it to draw the circuit. Um, and then we're gonna use you know, this uh, super node thing to, I'm trying to position this in a way that it will work better. Okay. Um, no, nah, it doesn't work, right? Hmm? No, that's not easy for me to do. It, it no, it, does, it doesn't work like that. The, uh, the, the, the tool does not have anything that allows me to do something you would assume to be quite simple, right? But no, it does not let me do that. It is not an iPad, that is correct. And I don't want an iPad for a reason. First of all, I don't like the way Apple do things. <laughs> Two, you know, uh, this is a reflective you know, device, which means you know, I can go out to full sun, and it will read just like you know, on a piece of paper. It's an e-paper device. Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have some columns over here, and then we'll you know, populate those columns. Um, so we have you know, S, R, and then with N1, we have um, three items. So we have N1 dot in bracket zero, which is the first input. Um, okay, this may not be the best way to write this. Okay, okay, I'll do this in a slightly different way. So M1 has three ports. It has input port zero, input port one, and the output port. N2 is the same way. It has input port zero, input port one, and the output port. And then we have two, Output ports, they are named your Q and NQ, respectively, like so. Okay. Uh, you don't have to kind of copy everything if you don't want to, but, you know, um, the, write down, writing down something in your notes is helpful, okay? So you capture whatever is not being recorded on the screen, okay? That's the most important part is whatever is not being um, recorded by my own recorder. I'm looking for... A ruler. I don't need exactly a real ruler. Ruler. I can make one myself because I want to have some reasonable, reasonably vertical straight lines. Okay, so yeah, I'm good. See. But thank you, thank you for the offer. So we'll just have a bunch of columns like these. Now, obviously, I can do this you know, with a spreadsheet as well, which is actually what you will be doing in today's lab. You'll be doing this, but using a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet is pre-formatted already, so you don't have to worry about you know, having to get a ruler and line up you know, these things. There we go. Okay. All right. So now what we want to do is to say, we don't know anything about the NAND gates, okay? So everything is unknown except for the state of the S and the R input pins. Um, in this case, we know that S is a one and R is a zero. And we assume that everything else is unknown, okay? So we'll just say that you know the output of N1 is unknown, the output of N2 is unknown, as a result, Q is unknown, N Q is unknown. We'll just we'll just put all the question marks here. 
OK. All right. So the first thing we need to do after initially knowing that, OK, we, we only know the starting point is the S input pin is a 1 and the R input pin is a 0, is what I would call an NC uh, phase or NC step. NC stands for node connectivity. In other words, I'm propagating the known values to other things of the same node. OK, so let's see whether you guys can help me with this. Can someone name um, the other thing that is connected to the same node as the input pin S? So look at, yeah. So N1's input 0 is connected to the same node. So in the NC step, we just go like, oh, OK. So this has to be getting a 1 as well. So we are basically just copying those changes to everything con electrically connected to the same node. This is node connectivity, which, is, which I just call NC. For the same reason, can someone tell me uh, what else connects to the same node as R, the input pin R? You can look at the diagram here. N2 dot in 1, OK? So that's you know, what is getting R. Um, that's it, OK? So, so the NC phase is done, OK? This is uh, one step of the analysis, is to look at just the node connectivity to figure out, OK, if we just get a new input for input pin S, what else is going to have the same value? If we know what is presented to input pin R, what is going to get the same value? Is that OK? Does everybody understand what node connectivity means in this analysis? OK, so we got some nods. OK, all right, cool. So the next one is called PD, which is actually a misnomer. No, PD stands for propagational delay, OK, which is after a propagational delay, what is going to be changed? So this time, we have to look at devices where at least one of the input pins have just been changed. And then we look at the device and ask, can we know whether the output, what the output is? And if so, is it changed from what it was before? So I'll give you an example, okay? We are working on this step by step. <clears throat> For instance, in this case, we know that N1 has one of its input pins changed because it was unknown before, it is now known as a one. The question is just knowing that input zero of N1 is now a one, can we confirm what the output should be? This is a NAND gate, okay? It's a negated AND gate. Just knowing that one input is a one, can we conclude what the output is going to be? OK, how, how do we solve this problem? Except for, let me ask Tech. But wait, Tech is not very friendly. Let me ask you know, Chat GPT instead. Instead of doing that, try to solve this problem yourselves. OK, the question is, how do you solve this problem? What do we already know? What tools do we have in order to answer this question? Yes. OK, so let me look at this as a sub-problem. We're dealing with a NAND operator, right? So do we know the behavior of a NAND operator or a NAND gate? OK, and how do you define that? Sorry? The uh, truth table, OK? Well, logic table, truth table, same thing, OK? Good enough. So what we're going to do is to look at the truth table of a NAND gate. Uh, we'll just call input x, what we'll call the other input y. The truth table looks like this, kind of boring. And then we now look at x NAND y as a result. So what is 0 NAND 0? That is correct. And the next one? 
it is also a one, okay? Because it's a negated and, which means with and, we have zero, 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 and a one, right? So with negated and, we just get the opposite of that, which would be one, 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 and a zero. Have we seen this truth table before? And when did we see this? The first week. Yep. Okay, very good. Okay. So I'm glad that, you know, at least some people in this class have been studying and keeping up with all the knowledge. So the next question is, okay, now that we know this, okay, I have known this for a while. How is this answering my question? So what we want to look at this, the way we look at this is to say, what if we know X is a one, okay, but nothing else? Can we conclude the actual result of X and Y? In other words, we are looking at this, these two rows, okay, because you know, that's when X is a one, and we are trying to look at these two and go like, are they the same? Are they consistent? Whenever X is a one, the output is always blah. Nope, not, not, no such luck this time, right? Because we can see how when X is a one, the output can be a one or a zero depending on what Y is. But we don't know what Y is, okay? So we cannot make a conclusion in this case. Is that making any sense? In other words, we still don't know what it, anything about the output of N1 as a NAND gate. So we go back here, okay? And since the current output is still a question mark, we don't write anything. In other words, until you see a change, then you record a change. But if you don't see a change, just leave it blank, okay? So we cannot make any conclusion here. Let's look at N2, okay? Because N2 also sees one of these input pin changing from an unknown to a zero in this case. So we perform the same analysis. We ask the question, can we, just knowing one input pin of N2 being a zero, can we conclude the output? Some of you are nodding already because you know how to use the truth table, but I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show the whole class of how to use the truth table in this case. So what we are looking at in this case is not looking at the two ones here. I cannot erase that unfortunately, but I can, I'm looking at what, what if we know the input is, are zeros. One input is a zero, okay, I correct myself. The, exactly, you can see, Whenever X is a zero, the output is a one. It doesn't care about the value of Y, right? So that means I can go back to here and say, hmm, I can know the output of N2 is going to be a one for sure. Even though I do not know what the other input pin is for N2, just knowing that in one of N2 is a zero, I can conclude the output is going to be a one. Is that, is that okay? Now this is, imp this is very important, okay? Um, that's the only thing we can do in PD in this particular propagational delay. So the question is, why is it called a PD step, okay? Why is it called propagational delay? So the concept of the propagational delay goes back to also something that we talked about in week one. In fact, the very first class the, that I did not record, okay? So I hope you guys remember this circuit, okay? I mean, it's pretty hard not to remember this circuit, right? I mean, this is the very first thing you guys saw in this class, and all of you are thinking, did I sign up for the wrong class? You know, I thought this is a programming class in computer science and not an electrical you know, uh, engineering class. That's okay. I mean, that's a pretty normal response from people. Okay, you guys all remember this circuit here? Okay, so we also remember that these two connect to one of the input pins, and then these two, okay, I'm gonna draw the more typical way of saying these two are connected, or not connected, sorry. So the loopy here means they're not connected. Okay, so you guys remember this circuit here. The propagation of delay, which I have also explained in earlier um, classes, you know, because we have to analyze um, how long does it take for the carry look ahead adder to work. Remember that whole discussion of you know, a bunch of AND gates can operate at the same time? 
but then you know, the AND gates have to feed into the OR gate for the second stage of the computation. Yes, go ahead. Say, say that one more time. The question is that as people ask the question to write the diagram, yep. wouldn't it be possible to understand how this move around in memory for assembly? No. Not, the second part of the no, not yet. Well, for the second half of the semester, we are going to use uh, more complex devices, but the behavior of those devices is also well described in Logisim. Um, you know, most of those are just switches. It's like turning a switch, or, you know, when, when we get there, I'll use analogies that you guys wouldn't understand. It's not moving bits, okay, because moving implies that that thing would disappear from the origin, so we are looking at the propagation of changes from one device to another device. That's what we are looking at. But in this case, okay, we'll focus on this little diagram here. So the diagram is not important. The important part is when you want a transistor to turn on and when you want a transistor to turn off, there's a slight delay, okay? It's kind of like you're know, telling someone, okay, let's say someone is over at the light switches over here, and I'm the person, I'm the gate of that device. I'm telling that person, turn it on, okay? And then that person will go like, oh, okay, push the button, turn on the lights. So from the moment that I say turn it on to the moment that the lights actually turn on, there's a slight delay. So it's the same way over here. And the reason has to do with, with a uh, transistor. Okay, this is, let's say this is a transistor and there's a gate. This is the gate, this is the source, and this is the drain. So when the gate turns on, okay, it, there's a slight delay between the gate changing its state and you know, actual um, quantities flowing from the source to the drain. In this case, because it's an N-type device, it is electrons that are flowing from the source to the drain. But there's a delay between the change of the state of the gate to the actual flow of electrons from the source to the, to the drain. Um, there are multiple reasons why there is a delay, but most of the delay has to do with, <clears throat> this is a capacitor. It takes time to charge up the capacitor so that you know, there's enough charge to affect the transistor to turn on the, um, the pathway from the source to the drain. This is not a device physics class because I would totally fail that class myself, okay? So we are not gonna talk about the internal you know, device you know, physics of a transistor. We'll just say that there's a delay, okay? So if there is a delay like this, so that means from the time I make changes you know, to the input pins, there will be a slight delay before the output is changed accordingly. So there's a certain you know, delta T or delta time difference you know, between the changes to the input to the changes to the output. Are we okay with that concept? There's a lag time. Is that okay? I just have to remember to use terms that everybody in this class you know, understand. So when I say lag time, you guys go like, oh yeah, I get that. Yeah, I know there are a lot of gamers here you know, where lag time is a big thing, especially if you're, sorry? Input lag, especially when you play video games you know, that require like you know, really kind of real time type of thing. So the lag time can, can mean a lot of your, can mean a, a lot of changes to your score. <laughs> All right, so we're good with this, with this concept, the lag time, you know, changes you know, from the input to the changes to the, the time between the changes to the input pins and the chain corresponding change to the output pin. We good with that concept? Okay, all right. So if a regular typical you know, NAND gate, because this is a NAND gate here, this is a typical NAND gate that we talked about in week one. So if a typical NAND gate has a delay, that means all the devices that we built out of a NAND gate also have, also have intrinsic propagational delays, okay? So getting back to the diagram, 
So that's why it's called a PD, you know, because you know there's a change, there's a slight delay, you know, from the previous NC row change to the PD row here. There's a slight you know, delta T between these two rows. Is that okay? All right. So after the PD, okay, then we go back to another NC. Okay. So we go back to another NC in this case because hey, one thing got changed because of the PD. So after a certain propagational delay, we see that the output of N2 changed from was changed from unknown to a one now. So that is a change. So now I have to track that change. Because of the output of N2 being changed, who else is going to be changed because of node connectivity? So remember, node connectivity is simply looking at the physical wiring of a circuit and figure out, hey, if the output of N2 has just changed, something is gonna change as a result of that. So can someone tell me which two things would change as a result of the output of N2 being changed. Uh, okay, you go ahead first, and then you go ahead. Okay, just, okay, NQ is fine. <laughs> and then go ahead. Input one of N1, that is correct. Because those three belong to the same node. So in terms of the circuit here, because we just made a change to the output of N2, which is this pin here, so it connects to NQ, so that's a, as a result, NQ is also changed to one, but you can also follow this wiring, and it goes to the second input of N1, and as a result, <coughs> excuse me, the second input of N1 is also changed to exactly the same thing, which is a one. So are we doing okay so far in terms of you know, the table why I put these two ones down on you know, in the table. Because those are all changes from an unknown to a known state, which is a one in this case. Are we okay so far? All right. Yeah. Because NQ is electrically connected to the output of N2. It's kind of like you know you're you I'm I'm giving you the bare copper of a wire of a of a cord and I just say hold on to this and then I plug it to the wall outlet and then you go like Ugh! that's kind of like that because you know you're electrically connected to the other end of the cord so when I plug that into the outlet you get a shock so. I'm pretty sure after today's class, most people just you know, remember, oh, tech you know, just gave people bad advice of holding on to the copper end of a wire while the other person plugging into the wall outlet. But that's connectivity, that's electrical connectivity. You get a shock because you're now electrically connected to the other side. Is that okay? All right. All right, so what do we do next? Another PD, okay? So whenever a row has some change, then you have to go for the alternate. So now we have to look at PD, which is basically asking the question of, um, is anyone's output going to change this time because the, because the NC step changed certain things, okay? So once again, you have to look at all the devices. When I said devices, they are, I'm referring to all the gates, okay? A NAND gate is a device, a OR gate is a device, a NOT gate is a device. So a device is something where the output would change because you make some changes to the input. That is, quote unquote, a device, okay? All right, so in this case, what devices just got its, uh, one of these input change? NQ is not a problem because NQ is an output pin, in other words, it's just a place for people to put a vote meter on so that we can know what is the current state of something. So NQ doesn't really affect anything else within the same circuit. It is an output pin. But the other thing that also received a change is the input one of N1, which is a device. So now we have to look at N1 and say, um, are we going to you know, make some changes over here? What do you think? It's going to be a zero because now we know both inputs of N1 are 
once. And because it's a NAND gate, when both input, when all the inputs are, z are ones, the output is going to be a zero. Very good. Okay, so this is a change because it wasn't a zero before. It was unknown before. So becoming zero is a change, and I have to record that change. Now, because the PD row says, hey, something got changed, now I have to go for another NC row, okay? So we have to go for another NC, which basically is asking, because the output of N1 just got changed, who else is going to be changed? So for that, we have to look at the diagram, right, to, to basically figure out what is connected to the output of N1. So out the output of N1 is right here. We know Q is connected to it. We also know that the first input of N2, which is known as N0, is also connected to it. So now we have to see if we have to make some updates, okay? So we go for this one. There's an update over here. And also there's an update over here. Is that okay? All right, so that's just because of the electrical connection between the ports of the devices. Well, since the NC row has some changes, guess what? What do we have to do? We have to go for PD again. Yep, there we go. So we go for PD again. Uh, Q as an output pin is not an issue. It is not exactly a device. It is just a place for us to, so that we can tell what is the state of the circuit. So Q being changed to a zero is not a concern, okay? We are not too you know, concerned about that. But the first input of N2 getting changed to a zero, uh, that is a change to one of the inputs of a device which can potentially change the output of the device. But are we changing the output of N2? Nope. So if there's no change, in other words, if this one is going to continue over here, we do not write down the one, okay? Because it's not a change. This is how we can tell, oh, this is all done. Because this row has no changes in it. That's how we can say we are now at what we call a steady state. So a steady state of a circuit is a state where the changes will stop propagating. There, there are, there's no further change to the entire circuit at this point. Are we doing okay so far with that concept? We're at a steady state. Okay. So now we go look at this and go like, hmm, I wonder what's going to happen if um, R is going to change from a zero to a one. Okay. In other words, I'm just going to put a one over here. I will keep S as a one, but I'm going to change R from a zero to a one. Is that okay? Does everybody understand what I'm just what I'm doing to the circuit? I keep everything else you know, the same, and I'm just changing the input pin R from a zero to a one. So the first thing I need to do is an NC, okay? We look at you know, what else is connected to R you know, in this circuit here, and I'm just looking at the circuit here. It has one single connection to N2, or the second input of N2. So the second input of N2 is gonna to change to a one over here. Okay, that completes the NC. But since the NC has one change over here, now we have to go for PD, okay? Which means you know, now we have to look at um, what else is gonna change you know, because of the input of a device is being changed and the output is affected because of that change. You look at this and go like, hmm, if, anything, if, if anything's gonna change, it's gonna be here. Because N2 is the device that experiences one of its input pins being changed, so potentially the output may be changed. But when you look at this, um, N2 as a, as a NAND gate has zero, one as its inputs. So the output is going to still be a one, which means we are not gonna put anything here because it is not a change. And since it's not a change, we now say, mm, we are done with this particular PD also. The circuit is now at a steady state again. So even though we made a change, it doesn't change you know, how the circuit operates at all. Everything else stays put. Yep. What happens if the default state of the circuit has both 
Um, then it would, that's a very good question. We'll address that, you know, maybe in a moment, okay? But for now, we are going to look at another case, okay? So I'm going to put a bigger divider here, okay? So, so I'm just gonna put a big divider so that we can separate you know, the experiment into two parts, okay? So the second part is, what if we start the circuit with um, the S and the R reversed? So we, oops, then we put a zero over here, and then we put a one over here. So this time, I'm gonna analyze the circuit much faster, okay, because I'm not gonna go through the step-by-step -step explanation. So this time, it's just gonna be the flip side, you know, um, Basically, whatever happened to M1 is now happening to N2. Whatever happened to N2 now happens to M1. Basically, Q and NQ are flipped also, you know, because S and R, the, the circuit, if you look at the circuit here, it is a mirror image of itself. If you imagine there's a mirror here, it is a mirror image. It's top-down mirror imaged. So in terms of the circuit, it's the same thing here. So that means the zero, which is on, on S, is connected to the first input of N1, so that becomes a zero, and then the one goes here, that completes you know, the first NC step, and because the input of N1 got changed, so the output has to be analyzed, but it's gonna be a one this time. Now remember, all of these are basically question marks because I'm restarting the entire circuit. I reset the entire circuit to begin with. But for N2, okay, knowing one of the input pins is a one, but the other one is unknown, does not give us any conclusive you know, output. We don't know what the output is gonna be. So we have to leave it as a question mark. Um, so that's the PD. But because the PD did change one output of a device, now we have to say, okay, where does N1.out connect to? N1.out connects to Q, okay, so Q is gonna be a one this time. N1.out also connects to the first input of N2, so the first input of N2 is also going to change to a one, um, and this is the NC, because we are looking at how the change of an output pin is affecting the other input pins connected to it. All right, so because the NC is we are changing certain things because of the NC. We have to go for another PD again. Uh, Q is not a problem, okay? It is not a device, it's just an output pin. But N2 is a device. So now we can see how N2 has both input pins being ones, which means the output is going to change to a zero. And that's the only change we are going to, this is the only resulting change you know, because of the previous NC step. But because of that change, we have to go for another NC again. In other words, we have to look at N2.out and ask, okay, because NC.out just got changed, who else is going to be changed you know, because of the electrical connection? So we look at the output of N2, it connects to NQ. So we know NQ is gonna change to a zero. It also connects back to the second input of N1. So that means, you know, Okay, I just put a zero at the wrong place. Excuse me. Okay, let me, nope. There we go. I should put it on this row, not the previous one. Okay, so it connects to also the second input of uh, N1. So it is over here, you put a zero over here. Okay, so that completes the NC you know, the entire NC thing, because you know, we only got one output pin getting changed, so the input pins connected to this output pin also have to be changed. So now we have to go for another PD. Um, N2 getting changed here is not a problem, it is not a device, but the second input of N1 getting changed can potentially change its output. But the output is one already, having both inputs being zeros, it's gonna maintain this one output, which means we are, gonna write, we are not writing anything down. So that means this entire, we, are now, we have now reached a steady state because there are no changes, um, no further changes you know, after a propagational delay. Are we still doing okay so far at this point? 
This is a replication of exactly what we did earlier, except this is the mirror image of what we did earlier. Is that okay? But there is a point in doing this, okay? There's a point in doing something that seems to be a replication of what happened just before. Because what happens if I change you know, the S pin to a one this time? Okay, so let's find out. The first thing you need to do is an NC. In other words, we, we look at what input pin S is connected to. It connects to the first input pin of N1. So that is gonna to change to a one over here, okay? <clears throat> And then we have to go for PD, propagational delay. After a propagational delay, we look at the device where the input pin just got changed, which is um, N1, the, the, first input pin of, the first input pin of N1. So as far as M N1 is concerned, uh, one input is a one, the other input is a zero, which means the output is going to be a one, but it was a one to begin with. I am not recording any changes. There's no change because of the change of the input as far as N1 is concerned. Is that okay? Okay, so that means you know, I'm not recording any changes on this row. We have now reached steady state again. You guys go like, but that's exactly what you said in the previous, you know, before the double bar line, you know, that's exactly the same thing, you know, happening in the reverse way, mirror image. So what is the whole point of this entire discussion? Well, let's take a look. I'm gonna use a circle here. This is the input of S and R starting with one and zero. And then eventually, you know, both inputs become one and one. The output, would be a one, a zero for Q, and a one for NQ. Is that okay? All right? But if we do it in a reversed way, starting with S getting a zero and R with a one, and then ending up with one and one over here, then we end up with exactly the opposite. Okay. You don't see this as a, as a problem? I see it as a kind of a problem here. Let me show you why I think this is a problem, because your usual truth table is not going to work anymore. Okay, so with a truth table, how does it work? You look at the independent inputs, right? So you have S and R as independent inputs. You go like, okay, you know, S can be a zero, S can be a one, R can be a zero or a one, can be a zero or a one. And then you look at the two outputs, okay? So you have Q and NQ, oops, and as your output and in this case okay the first row we haven't analyzed yet okay I can analyze that later but the second row we have analyzed right you know this results in uh, Q being a one and Q being a zero okay we know that okay because we just ran through the simulation earlier uh, if the input pin s is a one and R is a zero then we end up with exactly the opposite not a problem typical thing that we do with a truth table but when both inputs are ones, then we go like, um, I'm not sure what to write down with Q and NQ. Let's take a look again, okay? Let's take a look at the table that we, that we did earlier. On this row here, okay, if I look at the board, on this row here, we have both inputs S and R being ones. But when you look at the output, Q has an output of zero, and NQ has an output of one. Okay, we go back to the truth table, and you go like, okay, we'll just record exactly that. Okay, Q is a zero. Now, don't write this down, okay? Do not write this down. If you do, make sure you can, you're ready to erase it. Okay, so we'll write this down. But the second time, okay, you know, when you look at this row over here, both inputs are one at this point, right? But the outputs are opposite this time. In other words, Q is now a one, and NQ is now a zero. So you look at the truth table, it's going like, um, so what do we write here? Because you know, now we have two things that can happen corresponding to S and R being ones. Are you guys looking, are you guys understanding what I'm talking about? So this is the kind of the magical quality of the SR latch. The way we document this, okay, let me, 
include that, okay, is NC, which stands for no change in this case. When both input pins are ones, we are not changing the state of the output pins. It is simply maintained. The state of the SR latch is maintained. Wait, okay, the state being maintained, isn't that a fancy way to say remembered? That's why the SR latch is the most elementary memory device if you want to make something out of logic gates. All it takes is two NAND gates. We already know each NAND gate takes four transistors, so using eight transistors, you can make, quote unquote, a memory device. It's a really awkward kind of memory device, but nonetheless, it has the ability to, quote unquote, maintain its state. Is that okay so far? All right. So some of you are looking at this table, and I hope all of you are looking at this table and thinking the same thing. It's like, but what about the first row? Okay, you know, because you know, what happens when both S and R are zeros? Okay, what's gonna happen? <clears throat> so this part has to do with um, the way you think, okay, you know, you know, I'm talking about, you know, uh, not just study skills, but you know, what you do, how do you maintain an active mind in a class? If you look at the table like this, you know, I'm hoping you guys all have the question in your head. It's like, what happens when both of these are zeros? Because, you know, it's missing. How many people have that question in your head? Okay, that's a very, very good sign, okay? Because, you're, because it means that you're actively listening to me and you're processing the information actively as well. And you're also, you know, just kind of, kind of moving a little bit ahead, you know, of thinking, so what about that one? Okay, so how should we answer that question? What do you think? We use the same table, right? Okay, so we'll go ahead and analyze that particular one. That one turns out to be a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm gonna put a double bar here and we use you know, the same table. I think we, I have enough rows to answer this question, okay? All right, so this time, we are resetting the entire circuit. Everything is unknown except for S and R both being zeros to begin with, but everything else is unknown. So we start with an NC, which means you know, we look at the wiring of the devices to figure out you know, what else should be zeros in this case. All right, that's pretty easy answer, pretty question to answer. Both of these should be zeros because of the connectivity of the circuit. Everything else remained as unknowns, you know, after this NC step. And after this NC step, we go for a PD because some of the input pins of devices just got changed. So we have a PD after a propagational delay, something may be happening, okay? So now we have to look at the devices where at least one of the input pins just got changed. So we look at N1, M1 has one of the input pins just got changed from an unknown. So we have to look at the output of M1 and say, well, do we have any conclusion about the output of M1? What do you think? It's gonna be, no, the other one. What should we put, uh, what should we write down here? Yep. We know one imp, yep, it is a one, okay. So it's a one here, it is also a one here, okay? Because they're in the same boat, so to speak. So that's a PD, and then after that we have an NC, which is basically just looking at all the things to output that connect to the output pins of both of the NAND gates. So um, these would be changed, okay? So all the Qs, oh, okay, I take it back. I can undo like that, there we go. Okay, so both of these got changed, okay, you know, because uh, one connects to the output of M1, the other one connects to the output of N2, but we also got a few more changes here. This got changed, this also got changed, okay? So that's, that's the conclusion of the NC step this time, but since we just changed at least one input of one device, so we have to go for another PD. 
So now with this particular PD, we look at the, the, the devices where its input just got changed. Um, let's see. This one here is affecting N1. So we have to look at the output of N1 and ask, um, what is it going to be this time? It continues to be a 1, which means we're not going to write anything. Um, likewise, we look at you know this guy over here, which is the output of N2. So what should we put here? Nothing. Very good, because it continues to be a 1. So that means, oh, we are now at a steady state. And that is conclusive, okay? Because when both inputs are zeros, then both outputs would be ones. Okay, I think we know how to fill up that last row, the first row of the entire table. It's just one and one over here. Uh, do we have any questions about how the truth table of the NAND gate based SR latch is filled up? No questions? Okay, yes. Q and N, Q both be zeros. That is a very good question. I have an answer. It's a little bit tricky. <laughs> so let's take a look at what happens to another circuit. Okay, so I am going to, okay, I think I can do this. Okay, let me see if I can do this. I think there's a way for me to duplicate a page. All right, so erase all, no, 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 insert, insert after, copy current page, and then we can paste over here, probably. Paste. Woohoo, yes, okay. So now I can go ahead and erase certain parts of it or the majority of it while keeping the rest not erased. Let me see if I can do this. All right. And then just say delete, cut. Yes, most of it. Okay, so I still got some more to get rid of with that. And cut again. Okay, just got one little bit here. <laughs> yes, excellent. Probably should just put another layer on top of this in case I want to erase the entire layer. Let's do that. Um, layer control over here, add a new layer. Okay, am I using the new layer? Um, let's see. Yep, I'm using the new layer. Okay, so this time I'm all set up to erase just this particular layer. <laughs> all right, so what we'll do this time is to start the whole thing with zero, zero as inputs, okay? Okay, uh, change my tool. Come on. Back to my pen. Come on, there we go. All right, so initially everything are unknown to begin with, like that. And then we start with a zero, zero, okay? And then, you know, we, we have done this analysis already, okay? So how about I just kind of skip all the stuff in, the, in between and just, you know, come to the conclusion that I cannot, well, actually I cannot do that, so never mind. Because we have to maintain all the states in between everything else. So we are going to, I'll just work this out really fast. We, we already know, you know how to work this out. Um, this is my NC. So my PD is going to have one here, one here, one here. Oops, nope, not that one. Nope. Okay, undo. And do one more. There we go. All right. So when you're doing your lab, you have to kind of be careful not to do what I just did, which is collapsing the PD into the NC step. 
So you have to make sure that those two are separated. So the NC is going to update the Q and the NQ, as well as um, IN1 and IN0 over here. And then the PD is now saying, you know, okay, we are now at a steady state. Okay, so we are now at a steady state. Everything is good. I just replicated what I did in the previous one. Okay, so now the question is, what if I put, change both pins from zero to one at exactly the same moment? That's the question, okay? So according to the earlier analysis, a reasonable guess is, oh, okay, no change to the output pins, they're just gonna be one and ones, right? Well, if that is the intuitive answer, you still have to show that that is the case by analyzing the circuit using this particular approach, okay? Because, you know, just because you think, you know, just because you think uh, intuitively that is the answer does not mean that it is going to be the answer. So you still have to go through a rigorous process to kind of show that that really is the answer. Okay, so let's see what's gonna happen here. The first step is always an NC, which means, you know, let's take a look at what is connected to the input pins, okay? So those two are up updated. And then we go for PD, okay? We now look at the outputs. Huh, okay. So this time, you know, output is gonna change to a zero over here because both inputs of N1 are now ones. Does that make sense? And also over here, because both inputs of N2 are ones as well. Does that make sense to you? Okay, everything should make sense, okay? Because this is all based on the truth table of the NAND gate, okay? That's our PD. And then we go for another NC over here. So now we look at everything that connects to the output of N1 and the output of N2. All right, so they, they become zero and zero over here. Um, and this zero gets over to, I have to look at the diagram here. Uh, it goes to the second input of N1, so that goes here. And then this zero goes to the first input of N2, which is over here. Okay, I think that's all the propagation, I mean the uh, uh, node connectivity that we need to analyze here. So now we go for another PD. What is the conclusion of this PD? Let's take a look. Um, at this point, N1 has one input being a zero, so the output is gonna change to a, oops, yeah, one over here. And the same thing for N2, because one input of N2 just got, just got changed from a one to a zero, and as a result, the output of N2 is going to be a one. Is that okay? This is the PD, you know, because, because of the behavior of the NAND gate. So we go for another NC, which is basically asking, okay, now that we have changed the input of N1 and N2, what else is gonna change because of that, because of the electrical connection between the components, right? So this one is going to NQ. It is also going back to the second input of N1, which is over here. This one is going to Q, and it is also going back to the uh, second input of N1, which is, wait, first input of N2, sorry. So it goes, wait, go back to here. Is that okay? You look at this picture and go like, um, we're back to square one. Does everybody understand what I mean by going back to square one? Yes. Uh, yes. Because that's, this is the one over here. This is the one over here. This is the one over here because of the previous state, right? So in other words, I, I, just, I just went back to this row here. And what's gonna happen you know, after that? The, it, yep, it, it, it's, it's a loop here. So that means this is now, there's, there's no steady state. You can keep the simulation going, 
we are just going to be replicating these rows over and over and over again. If you update both Q and, um, excuse me, S and R at the same time, start them both as a zero, and then change both of them to one at the same time, you throw the circuit into what we call an oscillation. So the circuit now has no steady state whatsoever because it never settles. It becomes an oscillator. The oscillation is the timing of the oscillation has to do with you know, how long the PDs are going to take. Now, the NC technically has a certain delay as well because we know that electrons you know, do not just appear from, you know, it takes time for an electrical signal to go from one side to the other side, but that amount of time is very, very short. However, the devices, on the other hand, has uh, usually single digit of nanosecond in terms of the delay, so it is a significant delay, and the circuit is going to oscillate you know, using that delay as the period, and you can figure out the frequency once you know the period. Okay? Are we doing okay so far with this circuit? Isn't that kind of fun? Maybe? No? <laughs> but this is how we analyze circuits like this. Because, you know, every single step we change something, the change spreads out, right? And there can be multiple simultaneous changes in the circuit. All we have to do is to keep track of all of those changes. It's like, okay, we just keep track of all the changes to the input of the devices, and then after a certain propagational delay, let's figure out what the outputs would be. And then because the output pins you know, change, you know, are changed, then we analyze, because of the electrical connection between the components, how the input pins are going to change again, and then we go analyze the output again, and then we switch to the input, switch to the output, and so on until we either reach a steady state or we recognize there's a loop and we cannot, you know, this is just going to be oscillating forever. We're doing okay so far with this thing, okay? Does anyone want to see how this happens in Logisim? Huh? In Logisim? I don't think Logisim actually explains it. It just says your um, oscillation is likely. Yep. <laughs> that is correct. So you have to do quote unquote simultaneous fast enough to be within, to be less than the propagation of delay. That is the key. So if you do one change, do one pin, if you change one pin, and then after one propagation of delay, at least you make the other change, then it's not going to oscillate anymore. So you have to make changes within the, uh, the period of the cycle in order for the oscillation to occur. So if you want to simulate this effect in the uh, Logisim circuit, it will take a slight change to the circuit before um, that can happen. So let me see where the circuit is. And, I, oh, okay, I see it. There we go. Okay. So in order to make, yeah, go ahead. Uh, huh, that's a good idea. I have not experimented with that before. So let's see. So we'll enable simulation, reset the whole thing. Okay, this is all zero, zero. So now we pause the simulation. We disable simulation, and then we make changes to both input pins to be ones, and then we enable the simulation again without resetting it. So now we go like this, yep, very good idea. So now we have oscillation apparent, because the larger sim has a detection mechanism um, to detect, you know, oh, okay, this <laughs> doesn't look good, looks like, you know, I cannot, find out you know, how this whole thing is going to settle, because it's not going to settle. So what would be kind of interesting to do is to build an actual circuit using real you know, transistors and see you know, how it's going to oscillate. The oscillation speed is so high that you cannot, if you hook up like LEDs to the output, 
you're not going to change the change. It's not going to blink from your perspective, okay? Because you know, the human eye has a refresh rate of uh, about 30 frames per second, which means all of you who are buying those you know, monitors that has a 200 frames per second rating, you're spending extra money without any effect. You cannot tell the difference. Now, if you were a fly, then you would be able to tell the difference. Because flies actually have a much higher refresh rate in terms of their eyes than we do. That's why they can, they can see, clinical see your hand approaching and just fly away, you know, leisurely. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the gamer monitors, you know, have a much higher refresh rate than the normal monitors. And uh, some people would claim that that makes a big difference. But your eye cannot really perceive that. But your eye is only capable of you know refreshing like you know about at 30 frames per second. So doubling is reasonable. Okay, you know, be, you know some of you are going to get into engineering and you would understand why the sampling frequency has to be twice of what you're actually trying to sample. But four times and more is not going to make any you know actual differences. And of course, you know, some of you are going to say, no, I can definitely tell that I score better when I upgrade my, after I upgrade my monitor. So after I spend like, you know, a few hundred bucks to upgrade my monitor, I perform better in my game. Yep. Sure. In fact, I can do even better than that. Okay, so we'll... Stop the simulation, reset the whole thing, and then simulate again. Um, and we basically don't want to, oh, right, okay. So let's not start the simulation again. Reset, change both inputs to ones. In other words, right now, I'm telling Logisim, forget everything that you know about the output or the states of M1 and N2. This is the initial state, right? So now we enable simulation at this point and see what Logisim has to say. I already know what it's going to say. It, it's basically saying I have no idea what the output should be because I didn't give it the initial state of N1 and N2. All I said is maintain because when both inputs are ones, we're telling the circuit to maintain the current state. But since there's no known current state, the circuit simulator can no longer say, oh, I know for sure the output is going to be, oh, I cannot, because I don't know the initial states of the transistors to begin with. So these are all very good questions, okay? It reflects that you guys are thinking about, you know, you're absorbing you know, what you just learned, and you're thinking about, but what about this scenario? That I think is the best way to study. It's really thinking about, but what if, okay? Based on what you have learned already, think about the what ifs. Yes? Um, that is a good question, okay? So I don't know the answer right away, but I'm going to work on it, right? So let's see, where is my tablet? There we go, I think that's it, right, okay. So this is the oscillation, and basically if one, okay, if the propagational delay, if one has a propagational delay that is twice the other one, you can still end up with a steady state because it's not reacting fast enough to update the other input to cause the oscillation, to continue the oscillation. So I think if the propagational delay of the devices or if one is twice the other one, then oscillation is not going to occur. That's just my speculation. You know, basically the way you do this is to basically say um, the update of this output is this is not going to update for another you know PD you know, period. So this will continue to be a one, and then see what happens to the circuit. It does rely on both you know, to be updated at the same time. If one is updating, the other one maintains and not update for another uh, 
propagational delay you know, period, I think the circuit will settle. So it's going to lean because of the delay, of the extra you know, uh, propagational delay. Now, which way it's going to lean, I cannot remember. You know, I cannot mentally work it out. But I think that's just going to impact you know, which way it's going to lean, and then it will just you know, settle, with a, settle with a steady state in that case. Now, I can actually work it out you know, using the method that I just talked about, but you know, I, I'm not going to do it today. So that's a very good question. I like questions where I do not have an answer ready, readily. That makes me think, which makes the class a whole lot more fun to teach. All right. So let's go ahead and take roll. OK, we still got a few more minutes before I send you guys all to the lab. So let's take roll. And all righty. There we go. And the word for taking row is just PD. <laughs> Propagational delay, all lowercase. So the lab that you're going to do today is based on this. Okay, I think it's going to be a it's going to be a tedious one, but it's not going to be a very difficult one. So I'm going to show you guys what the lab is going to look like before you guys all go to the lab. Do I need to uh, keep this screen on, or you guys are doing okay? All right. <clears throat> so let's back up. All right, so today's lab has two parts. The first part is the actual usual you know, quiz style. Um, it is this part here. The second part is when you need to turn in something. And you can see that the due dates are different. The quiz part is due tonight, so you do have to get that part done tonight. But the Google Sheets, the Google Sheet that you have to turn in is due on Thursday, right before class. So you have a little bit more time, okay, you have a lot more time to finish up the, the spreadsheet. Um, so let me go into this one so you can know the, at least the, uh, the access code. Okay. The new quiz style does not show the access code easily you know, as the one before. So I have to go to settings, go to show access code, step master. Okay, why is it called step master? Imagine a real step master where one pedal says NC, the other pedal says PD. You're doing this, right? Therefore, step master. Okay, so this one is tedious, okay? So be prepared to spend some time. Um, you're gonna have to use Google Sheets to do this one. So when you go to the lab, you know, the first thing you wanna do is to open up, um, there's a link for you to copy the template already, okay? So you don't have to start from scratch. Um, I think there's not much to talk about right now, so I'll let you guys go to the lab. I will finish up here, upload the lecture, and I'll join you guys at the lab shortly.